Here it's Vicki with Mindful Minute, and today's reading is April 14th, and it's about self-confidence. It may have nothing to do with me, but if a friend or loved one is sad or angry, I can secretly wonder, what did I do? What can I do? What? Why didn't I do it all better to begin with? I am often surprised and humbled by how quickly in my insecurity I can begin to assume responsibility for all the wrongs and sufferings I see around me. When thrown off center, when old patterns return, when feeling exhausted or depressed, I so quickly become exaggerated, become the exaggerated cause of all that is not right in the world. <laughs> I know I am not alone in this. Perhaps it is one of the laws of emotional weather. Sudden laws, sudden laws result in isolated storms. Sudden lows result in isolated storms. It has happened to me enough over the years that I have to acknowledge the power of negative self-centeredness. We typically think, we typically think of the ego-centered as being conceited and self-inflated and quite selfish. But this recurring struggle with exaggerated responsibility has made me realize that more often we are ego-centered when feeling deflated, when feeling shaken from our sense of oneness with things. In that place of separation, we become darkly self-centered, blaming ourselves for not fixing things or making things right or for learning bad things happen, letting bad things happen. Underneath these self-recriminations is the grandiose assumption that we have the power in the first place to control events that are really beyond any human being's influence. Certainly, we affect each other, and often, but to assume that other people's inner moods hinge on the presence, on my presence, is an egocentric way to keep myself in a cycle of sacrifice and guilt. Further, to assume that another's condition or way of being in the world hinges on my presence is the beginning of self-oppression and codependence. In extreme moments of negative self-centeredness, we can even assume magical proportions of burden in which we feel acutely responsible for a loved one's illness or misfortune because we weren't good enough or there enough or perfect enough. It is helpful to note here, psychologist Michael Mahoney's definition of self-confidence. He traces confidence to the Latin confidere, confidere, fidelity, and underneath self-confidence is a fidelity to the self. Hmm. Indeed, it is only a devotion to that sacred bottom beneath our moods of insecurity that bring us back in accord with the center of the heart, which shares the same living center with all beings. This is what the Hindu, Hindu tradition calls Atman, the shared immortal self. Atman, the shared immortal self. So now, when I trip into moments of low, low esteem and feel certain that I am the cause of all this bad weather, I try to feel the pace of the earth turning beneath my feet, and the pace of the clouds drifting over my head, and the pace of my heart opening after a lifetime of pain. When these align, I am weakened of my ordinary will and awakened into a power greater than any one heart, greater than the weather of any one day or the mood of any one life. And the activities are sit quietly and become centered, now bring to mind the last time you felt a loved one's mood sink in your presence. Try not to deflect the discomfort you felt. Try to let go of all self-questioning. Try to breathe through to the calm you felt before bringing this to mind. Breathe deeply and breathe. bring to mind the depth of heart you see in this person that makes you love them. Try to feel the love that lives beneath all moods. Try to feel the love that lives beneath all moods. I mean, this reading is probably up there in my top five of so far.
It is so true and I can completely relate to it as a recovering codependent. Um, the way he puts it, that perhaps it is one of the laws of emotional weather. Sudden lows result in isolated storms and I can tell you that I used to think I had so much influence on other people's moods and I used to take responsibility for it and I used to soak in, I was very good at soaking in other people's feelings and taking them on and feeling them for them. And I never ever did think that my low self-esteem was self-centered. I didn't for years and years and years. I had no concept that I was only thinking about myself because I was in such low self-esteem. I thought, I'm not egocentric. I'm not self-centered, but I was so self-centered. That's all I thought about was how much everybody didn't like me and how much I screwed this up and how much I screwed that up. And, you know, um, not conceited or self-inflated. I was quite the opposite. I was quite the opposite, and I can re relate to this, and I would take on everybody's problems, and, and sometimes that was a deflection for dealing with my own problems, but most times it was me trying to make right the mood, <laughs> trying to make everybody happy and pleasing, and, and it really didn't serve me or anyone else. It really didn't. It, it was not healthy, and this fidelity to the self, this self-confidence, this marriage to myself, right? This dedication, this forever love to myself is so profound to me and important. And this part that he talks about, the sacred bottom beneath our moods of insecurity that brings us back in accord with the center of the heart, which shares the same living center with all beings. And and I'm, I think that there is so much to that, This this living center that we're all kind of coming to and finding and, and hopefully learning to realize that we're all the same. And I have always had this visual of this like bright, shining, light, crystally, big, huge crystal inside of all of us, right? Like we have this bright, white something inside of us, this love, this being, this centeredness. And that, you know, we all compound it with low self-esteem and insecurity or grandiose thoughts or bad relationships, resentments, fears, all these things, they muck it up, just like in the ocean when something gets all that like green, yucky stuff on it. And I feel like that's what happens to our this, this living center of our being. And I think when we clear that, we are able to be a vessel in this, what they call in Hindu tradition, Atman, shared immortal self. When that's clean, I'm, I, I can be a vessel. I can connect with other human beings and, and I, can, I can keep myself in a, out of the bad weather of my moods, right? Out of the bad weather of my moods. And I just absolutely love this reading. I think there's so much to it. It is so healing and so helpful. And I am, um, I'm going to work on this just like I continue to work on all this stuff because it makes life so much easier and better and more beautiful. And when I'm connected with myself and inevitably with everybody else connecting with their selves, it brings us closer. Though we are apart right now, physically, I feel like we are together in heart. That's what I have today. <laughs> Deep thoughts. <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful day. Um, be well. Be safe. Be kind to yourself and others. This is the first time we're going through this. It's been a while that we've been at home, and I know it's getting a little bit. I've been missing my friends. I've been missing my friends. So missing my hugs. Um, so hug yourself today. Marry yourself. <laughs> be have self-fidelity. I guess fidelity isn't marriage, but I don't know. Anyways, whatever. It's interesting. <laughs> um, I will be back here tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.